Hello, and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. My name is James, and in this video, we show the difference between slew rate and rise time using measurements and how they affect op amps. Although much of this could apply to other circuits like snubbers. In short, if it is an analog system, you'll probably use slew rate, and if it is digital, you will probably use rise time. Not only are they similar, but they are directly related to each other. By the way, this idea came up in a discussion where I asked Element 14 community members for an example of where they selected the wrong op amp for an application. You can join in on that discussion with the link below. Hmm, I thought somebody was going to say they had a question. Anyway, let's go measure. Slew rate is the rate of change in a waveform. If we place two cursors on the rising edge of this sine wave, we can see the difference in voltage and time between them. You might also know this as the slope. This particular oscilloscope does the slew rate calculation for us. By the way, for a sine wave, the slew rate is fastest at its zero crossing. Here it is 4.7 megavolts per second, and up near the peak, it is only around 800 kilovolts per second. For op amps, the slew rate spec tells us how fast it can change its output. Since slew rate comes up so often with op amps, let's take a look at a circuit using a TL081. My initial problem was that this breadboard introduced way too much noise. So I made a small little test board that has good ground planes on the top and bottom. Then I soldered the op amp, passives, and headers directly to it. The result is much cleaner measurements. Plus, it's kind of cute. Increasing the sine wave frequency eventually causes the output to get distorted into a triangle wave. The poor op amp is slow to respond during the zero crossing, but kind of catches up at the peaks. To me, it's somewhat intuitive that if you put in a high frequency signal, the output will get distorted. But consider this. At 300 kHz, as I increase the input voltage, the output becomes distorted at 8 volts peak to peak. We are back to the triangle wave. And the reason for that is the time and voltage relationship. In this case, the op amp is responding to an input voltage that is changing five times faster than the previous example. With some math, we can actually predict these behaviors. For sine waves, slew rate is found by calculating 2 times pi times frequency times the peak voltage. By the way, you could also find the maximum voltage at some frequency or the frequency based on the voltage using some algebra. I have a question. There it is. What's up? Um, so your measurements use mega and kilovolts? But when I look at the data sheet, I see 20 volts per microsecond. How is that? Yeah, about that. Just move the decimal over. 20 megavolt per second is 20 volts per microsecond. Also, that slew rate is the typical value for the TL081, though a real one is closer to 12 or 13. Now, if your oscilloscope does not calculate slew rate, you'll have to do it manually. For sine waves, the easiest way is to turn on frequency and a voltage measurement to calculate using the equation I showed before. Just remember to divide the peak to peak voltage by two to get the peak voltage. Clever users could write a Python script to grab those values and automate the calculation. Check the link below for a video on how to do that kind of thing. For now, let's go talk about rise time. Rise time is how long it takes a signal to get from one voltage to another. It is measured at the 10% and 90% points of an edge. If we zoom in to see the edge better, it is much easier to use the cursors to measure the time difference. Here, it is between 6 and 9 nanoseconds. Or we could just turn on a rise time measurement, which almost all scopes can do. Okay, so in both of those cases, you measure the time difference between two points. So how is rise time different? Yeah, it's subtle, and the title of the video. With rise time, the change in voltage is not measured directly. For example, in a digital signal, you are more interested in how long it takes to get to a predetermined threshold. The voltage levels are bounded, making it useful for a small signal analysis. Also, square waves are multiple sine waves combined together. The edge contains a lot of high frequency content. Remember, you can use 0.35 over the rise time to estimate the bandwidth of a digital signal. Okay, back to the example circuit. If we increase the previous input voltage from 2.5 to 10 volts peak to peak, the rise time stays the same. But check out the slew rate, it is much bigger or faster. What? The AWG we're using as an input has a fixed rise time. The data sheet says five nanoseconds, but I suspect that they're measuring at the 2080 points instead of the 1090 points. Regardless, it maintains a constant rise time by adjusting its slew rate. Now, let's look at the op amps output with this fast slew rate. Yeah, that looks pretty, um, nasty. And it leads us into a quick discussion of small versus large signal response. 
When I first heard the words small and large signal, my first question was, well, what voltage makes it large or small? But those phrases don't specifically mean something like voltage. For example, with an op amp, we look at the overall output to determine if the response is large or small signal, not just its voltage. The left side are inputs with different rise times and the right side are their outputs. The top has a small signal response and the bottom has a large signal response. In other words, the op amp on top is effectively linear with its output. It is correctly reproducing the input with some closed loop gain. Take note that the output slew rate is well below the 13 or 20 volts per microsecond from the datasheet, while the bottom signal has a bunch of problems. Quick side note, this AWG has a very fast edge when generating square waves, but when generating pulses, it offers variable rise times, which I'm making use of here. However, it starts at 200 nanoseconds, which is much slower than the square wave mode. So what I'm calling the bad signal is showing a large signal response. It has a Miller effect shelf, the slew rate is limited, and it does this weird pre-shoot. That pre-shoot behavior is a great indicator you are overdriving an op amp with a rise time that is way too fast. Additionally, there is significant delay from the input step to the amplifier's response. And by the way, that pre-shoot is not a DSP artifact on the digital scope. It happens on an analog scope as well. And like all things in engineering, this is not an either or situation. For example, the top two waveforms are the ones we just saw, and the bottom two have an input step of 200 and 500 nanoseconds. These have both small and large signal elements. Since the grid centers are the trigger point, you can see that both amplifiers are overdriven, they have slew rate limitations, and they are both overshooting. But they still kind of look like the original input, so I guess you could call them semi-linear? Anyway, the comparison is especially important when working with square waves like digital signals. Throughout this example, the frequency of the square wave is relatively slow at 10 kilohertz, but the rise time of each edge is eight nanoseconds, which causes the op amp to get distorted even though the fundamental frequency is so low. In summary, slew rate is the voltage change over time. It often describes analog waveforms, while rise time also measures a change in time, but usually with bounded voltages like in a digital system. Follow the link below to the Element 14 community where you will find links to stuff like op amp videos from the learning circuit and DC to daylight. Also check out a post by a community member who ran into the rise time being too fast for an op amp slew rate when working with USB-C's slow power delivery signals. And remember, that is the best place to ask electronics questions because if I don't know the answer, someone there will. As always, thank you for watching. For now it is time for me to get back to rising in time to prevent slew rate limiting on my non-inverted electronics workbench.